Right, Misfits Boxing. Does anyone know that I box on there, by the way? It's just I don't bring it up all that often. I don't want to make it all about me, you know? Definitely not what I most wanted for this video. But rumour has it that Misfits are looking to do another pay-per-view card, as they do from time to time. And when they do usually do a pay-per-view card, there's a very simple blueprint, isn't there? Stick KSI on the bill and jobs are good. Un. But as of right now, the influencer boxing world is still unsure as to when or if KSI will be coming back. So so it made me wonder, can you build a potential pay-per-view card without having KSI on the bill? Well, today, I am taking up the role of Mams Taylor, and that is exactly what I am going to try and do. So I'm going to start from the bottom of the bill, work my way all the way up to the top. And once you've seen the entire lineup of this hypothetical fight night, you can tell me in the comment section whether or not this card is pay-per-view worthy. And kicking off the bill, we have got Baby Hulk against Small Spartan J. Right, I'm not going to sit here and try and take credit for this one because it was actually Brian's idea. Um, lightweight tournament, also Brian's idea. Throwing me into the mix to absolutely steamroll the entire lightweight division, also Brian's idea. I'm just saying the man has a lot of good ideas. But this fight in particular is a great idea because it's an absolute banger. Because when you stick two guys in a boxing ring together that don't really know how to take a backward step, that's usually a recipe for a good fight. And despite the fact that these two guys are both coming off first round stoppages, that doesn't lessen my appetite to see these fight. You look at the first round stoppages, both guys were forcing the fight. Both guys were being active, throwing big shots and both guys were stopped walking in to the line of fire and forcing an action-packed fight. There's a way to lose a fight, isn't there? And personally, I would rather see a guy get stopped in the first trying to win than get stopped in the third just trying to survive. So because of that, I definitely want to see these guys back in their ASAP. And I'll tell you what, both fighters here, probably a little bit hard done by that Misfits don't have a 125 pound weight division because if they did, I could see both these guys campaigning and being in really, really exciting fights in that weight division. Usually, they both got the odds stacked against them. They're both giving away a height advantage, a reach advantage, very, very possibly even a weight advantage. But in this fight, despite technically Baby Hulk being the smaller man out of the two, they're pretty much on a level playing field. Now, Baby Hulk can bang, you know, and I am not just saying that for the sake of saying it. He hit me with a right hook to the body and a left hook upstairs and both shots I remember thinking fuck me this boy's got a bit of power in his hands probably the hardest I've been hit in a long time and also I think a lot of us were thinking that maybe Baby Hulk wouldn't be as good as he was on the night he showed way 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 better hand speed than we thought that he would have and also I think his boxing skill went a little bit under the radar and Jay showed a lot of desire in his fight against Pulley Arif he was constantly walking forward he dropped Pulley Arif really Really, really making a fight of things. Showed a lot of strength and also showed a real, real good engine. So I think if you put these two together in a boxing ring, only good things can happen. Apart from for the loser, then bad things can happen. But for us, the fight fans, we're going to see a good fight. Fight number two, Fox the G against Adam Salah. I know Fox the G wants this one, and I've got to be honest, I wouldn't mind seeing this one either. Now, I have been quite harsh on Adam Salah, haven't I? So much so that today I actually went back and watched a few of his fights to see whether maybe I have been getting it wrong on Adam Salah and maybe he is a level above some of the guys that, you know, aren't even in his vision at the moment. And I've got to be honest, I haven't changed my mind. I don't think Adam Salah's very good at all. And remember, when I say Adam Salah's not very good, I don't mean in the grand scheme of things. For someone who's probably been boxing four years or so, he probably is pretty good. But what I'm saying is when you're mentioning Adam Salah's name with the likes of myself, with Dean, with some of the guys at the top of the division, I just don't think he belongs there. I mean, he boxed Walid a couple of years ago, didn't he? I feel like a lot of people thought that Walid won that fight. I think it was given as a draw. So maybe if Adam Salah was to come into Misfits, and he was to be a Fox the G, he would be a legit contender and would be on his way to boxing for a title or at least having big, big fights after this one. And for Fox, this fight is absolutely perfect, isn't it? Adam Salah is a big name. He's definitely a step up from Fox's last fight, obviously Evil Hero. Adam Salah also has a win over Evil Hero. But most importantly... 
Fox will absolutely steam this guy. Listen, Fox the G's taking his time, man, and I respect that. He has got a lot of talent, a lot of charisma. He's got that star appeal. Despite his main event not going at all well, that doesn't make me think that we won't see him main event in future because I believe he has got that star attraction to be able to do that. However, if Fox carries on going the way he's going, then it's only a matter of time before the fans really want to start seeing him be tested. And the first test for me should be maybe an Adam Salah. And if he was able to look explosive against Adam Salah, if he was able to stop Adam Salah, then he would have a legitimate claim of doing something that no one else in the past has done so far. You know, you look at Walid Sharks, he didn't stop Adam Salah. So if Fox did it, it would be able to give us as the fans a bit more of a, a measuring stick as to where Fox is in this lightweight mix right now before he starts stepping in the ring with the guys at the top of the division. And there's guys like Pulley Arif who went the distance with Dean the Great who Fox could look to target next. It might give him an opportunity to get some more rounds in, to learn a little bit more, to work on his defence a little bit more. But let's be honest, Pulley Arif does not have anywhere near the size of fan base that Adam Salah has got. So for me, as someone who likes Fox the G and would like to see him do well, I would like to see him box Adam Salah next and have another big moment in the sun. Fight number three is Anthony Taylor against Aaron Chalmers. Now, I've got to be honest, this is actually a fight I had to check to see if it had actually even happened or not, but it hasn't. Go easy on me, guys. I am sort of fairly new to this YouTube scene, but Anthony Taylor, he's an ex-professional MMA fighter that has transitioned over to influencer boxing. And since doing so, he's become one of the veterans of YouTube boxing. He's boxed just about everyone so far, hasn't he? And he'd be coming into this fight as the champion off the back of back-to-back -back wins against two big, big, big YouTuber and Misfits boxing names in the likes of Salt Pappy and King Kenny. But I do still think Anthony Taylor is very much beatable, as we've seen in the past, if you can avoid his spoiling tactics. Anthony Taylor is very good at the dark arts of boxing, man. I think that's something that he's sort of brung over from his MMA background, being able to hit and then hold opponents, get so close in that they're not able to work and you do spoil their work, and then being able to score those points on the inside. Being unconventional can be very, very useful, especially in in influence of boxing. Now, Aaron Chalmers, on the other hand, also has a fair bit of experience in boxing. He also transitioned over from the MMA world, and I'm thinking that maybe there's a chance that that acquired skill set that he had for MMA, the wrestling, the grappling, would be able to help him nullify some of Anthony Taylor's tactics. Now, I used to watch Aaron Chalmers on Bellator. In fact, I used to watch him on Geordie Shaw. I used to like a bit of Geordie Shaw. Why I... But I used to watch him on Bellator and he was pretty good, man. But he was always a striker. That's one thing. So when he came over to boxing, I was quite glad for him. I thought that he would do very well. And I was more encouraged when I realised that he was coming all the way from Newcastle, training in my neck of the woods, which is Epsom, Surrey. Um, he was training in Red Hill. He was at Booth's gym. I've actually sparred people that have sparred Aaron. Um, I've actually been in the gym with him, well, at the same times as him, but never really spoke to him or anything like that. But I do know that he was a very good fighter. You look at his uh, his YouTube boxing record so far, he's took on Floyd Mayweather, Idris Virgo, varying performances in those ones. But what I'm saying is, I do think that Aaron is a lot, lot better than his record suggests, you know. And I don't think he has had that moment in the sun just yet, where he's had a night where... All of his skill set has been displayed and the performance has very much come together. So I do think, despite hearing him talk about retirement, I would love to see him against Anthony Taylor. And I do think that's a fight he could look good in. Fight number four is Joey Knight against Walid Sharks. Right, this one's an absolute fucking banger. Who in their right mind doesn't want to see this one? We're both in the tournament. Our paths will be crossing, tournament or no tournament, at some point. And neither of us stylistically look like we can really be in a bad fight. While it's always shown a desire to force fights to come forward to be in entertaining fights, and so far I've shown a mix of skill and power, and obviously my fights against Most Wanted and Baby Hulk, what I would say is you literally haven't seen anything of me yet. You've seen me box in two different styles to get the job done. I've got loads of different styles that I can get the job done in. And in the past week or so, Walid Sharks has actually had some choice words to say about myself. You know, I'm coming for your ass. You said who? Joey, yeah, man. <laughs> All that. Well, I feel bad if I hit him hard, bro. He's older and might get a brain damage and shit. How old is Joey now? I'm like fucking 40 or some shit. I, I wish if Joey, I swear to God, if he gets cocky with me and he puts his hands down like this, Joey, it's RIP, my baby. Yeah, they're saying he's 30. 
He's 20. Oh my god, yeah, he's 29. He's pretty much 30. Hey, he's younger than Adam. <laughs> he's younger than Adam. He don't look like that, though. But <laughs> like, he doesn't look scary. He looks retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Somebody had to say it, bro. Oh, fuck me. Is there anything more ironic than this fella talking about brain damage? Geezer's about 20 years old and can't string a fucking sentence together. Do you know what? I don't even mind it. I can already tell that I'm probably going to quite like this fella once I knock him out. But until that day comes, listen here, Walid Sharks, you little muffin-headed weasel. Don't be concerned about people looking scary because if that was what won fights, then you'd be fucked, wouldn't you, you skinny little boy band looking chinless pussy? See. Your lack of brain cells is going to get you seriously fucking hurt in there with me because you've already shown in your fight so far that you ain't got the intelligence to know where you should and shouldn't be in a ring. And the only safe place for you to be when you get in there with me is back in the changing rooms pulling the most wanted because once you get in a ring with me, that's game over for you, mate. Left in your changing rooms crying your eyes out once again. That's what you got to look forward to. I'll see you soon, little boy. Right, Ben Williams against Jarvis. I think I'm right to believe that this fight would be for the title. And if it is, I'll be buzzing to see it because I rate both of these guys highly. Now, Ben Williams is definitely one of the best boxers on Misfits. I actually think that people think he had more of an amateur background than he did. He was on the same card as me in Leeds. I spoke to him a couple of times and providing what he said was true to me, which I've got no doubt it is, he hasn't had that many amateur fights. He's probably had a couple more amateur fights than Jarvis. Jarvis, I'm guessing, but I think Jarvis is ready to go into a Ben Williams fight, and Ben Williams is ready to go into a Jarvis fight. Now, listen, I really like B Dave, man. That's someone I get on really well with when I see him. Um, got a lot of respect for him, but I do believe that Ben Williams' last fight against Fez Batista was a tougher test than Jarvis' last fight against B Dave. I think Fez Batista can come back into Misfits and be a real player in the Misfits scene. He needs to be injury free, he needs to be up for it, but he showed against Ben Williams that he is a very capable fighter and Ben Williams showed that he can handle the pressure he can go in there against guys who have a real burning desire to beat him and he can still get the job done now do you remember that clip that went viral of Jarvis when he sparred Floyd Mayweather and he came under a lot of criticism for it didn't he but that clip actually really really impressed me of Jarvis you know I thought he showed he had decent feet he had fairly good fundamentals Floyd peppered him but Floyd would pepper me you everyone watching if we all turned up at the same time you know so I don't think there's any real shame Shame there from Jarvis's point of view. Good, good fundamentals. And in the influencer boxing world, you could say that Jarvis has probably had the harder fights than Ben Williams and therefore has gained better experience than Ben Williams. Experience that will serve him well, but potentially not experience that will serve him as well as the amateur bouts that Ben Williams did have. So either way, you're going to get a very high-leveled fight for influencer boxing standards here. Sort Pappy against OJ Rose. Now, now, Sort Pappy would be coming into this one off the back of back-to-back -back losses. But if you're thinking that means Sort Pappy's on a decline, I think you're wrong. In fact, I think it's the complete opposite. I think that Sort Pappy will have learnt so much more from those back-to-back -back losses than he did from any of his wins. Sort Pappy is the definition of a natural. Every amateur boxing gym, every boxing gym in the country, in the world, has naturals in. That is guys that don't box, that haven't had a career, but just look like they're better than than their experience should allow them to be. And that is very much what Salt Pappy is. He's a guy that didn't have the amateur background and experience, but was competent. Not only that, was skillful the second he put on a pair of boxing gloves. And that is why he is now one of the leading names in Misfits. I do think that Salt Pappy is actually a victim of the fact that Misfits don't have more weight classes, though. Obviously, he's had the weight loss journey and he's lost a whole load of weight. I think he had fights at heavyweight before, didn't he? But when you look at it, I feel like he's a little bit undersized for the middleweight division and maybe making the welterweight limit would be a bit of a push for him. So if they had a... I don't know, man, a, a, a sort of a light middleweight division. That is where Salt Pappy would very much be at home, and that is where Salt Pappy would probably rule. OJ Rose is a fighter that I've boxed on the same card as. He's a fighter that's always been in entertaining fights, showed a great chin, really, really good engine. He's not got the flashy moves or the in-ring X factor of Salt Pappy, but one thing I do know is that this boy can fucking fight. You'd imagine that OJ Rose would look to force the fight, walk Salt Pappy down, test his 
his engine, which, let's be honest, it could work for him, but also it could absolutely play into Salt Pappy's hands and bring his work on a plate to him should the skill gap between the two men be vast. Now, if OJ Rose is going to take confidence from any Assault Pappy's losses, he's probably going to be better off served watching back the Anthony Taylor fight. Although, saying that, I do remember after the Anthony Taylor fight happening, seeing sparring footage of Salt Pappy and Anthony Taylor in the gym, and that's another reason why I say Salt Pappy is a natural, because to me, it looked like Salt Pappy had way more success in the sparring footage than he did on the night, and that shows progression. That shows a man who is able to observe and take in his shortcomings, work on them, and get better at them in a short amount of time. Right, we're now on to chief support with this fight, and it is Tommy Fury against Idris Virgo. Right, I'll beat you to it straight off the back. This fight is not happening. That's not because they're different weight divisions. It's because in Tommy Fury's eyes, Idris Virgo is probably not a big enough name for him. And that is a bit confusing isn't it? Because if Idris Virgo isn't a big enough name and therefore a big enough payday for Tommy Fury in influencer boxing, what winnable fights in pro boxing are there for Tommy Fury? And I get it, Tommy's gonna want Logan, Jake, KSI or Conor McGregor, but if he can't get any of those fights, then what's he gonna do? Is he gonna not box? Is he gonna box pro for hardly any money, or is he going to go back into Misfits and fight some of the other contenders? And if he's going to, Idris Virgo's definitely the man that I would like to see him in with. They've also had a bit of a bit of a ringside altercation, bit of beef at a Misfits event before. Can't remember what one it was at, but Idris Virgo walked over there, lot of bottle. Tommy sat there with his dad and his brothers and whatnot. Idris Virgo stuck it on him, and there's a big bit of chaos that has ensued. Now, Idris Virgo literally just done a video where he claims that he would beat up Vidal Riley. So if Idris Virgo believes he's beating up Vidal Riley, he is very much confident that he's going to beat Tommy Fury. And a part of me does believe that Tommy sort of understands where he is in the boxing landscape at the moment. Listen, it's not easy when you've got cameras shoved in your face 24-7. So I do feel sympathy for Tommy here. But when you think back to a couple of quotes he's made, you know, even I think after the Jake Paul fight, it was he said he still had aspirations of being a world champion. There was also the famous quote he made when he said he wanted to rid the world of YouTube boxing. Now listen, Tommy, you do not want this world ridded of YouTube boxing. Tommy very much needs YouTube boxing. Because without YouTube boxing, I don't believe there's any kind of boxing that is going to allow Tommy to box and be paid the money that he has now become accustomed to being paid. I mean, you look at the, the pro record of Tommy Fury. Look at the guy that he went to um, points with, Jordan Grant, the ginger guy. Um, he had a back and forth fight with Jordan Grant. I think he won on the scorecards by a round or two. It was a 50-50 fight, more or less. And then you look at Jordan Grant. Since then, he's been stopped by a couple of prospects. Obviously, he got bounced up and down off the canvas by Ben Whitaker. It sort of shows you as a pro what kind of level Tommy Fury would be at. And by the way, I do think that Tommy Fury is a better boxer than KSI and than Jake Paul. But it don't take fucking Manny Stewart to work out that this guy is closer to YouTube level than he is to British title level as a pro. So for me, I think that Tommy needs to lower the bar ever so slightly of the names that he'll be willing to box on the YouTube boxing scene and carry on with that. Carry on getting nice paydays that you couldn't go and get in the pro ranks. Now, Idris Virgo is the more experienced out of the two. He had more pro fights. I'm not sure about an amateur career, but he definitely is the more experienced. He also looks the more skillful, more pleasing on the eye, I would say, but it does look to me like Tommy Fury has a size advantage over him. You look at Idris Virgo's really, really impressive performance against Aaron Chalmers, but he did get hurt in that fight against Aaron Chalmers, or at least that's how it looked to me watching it. And Aaron Chalmers is definitely a lot smaller than Tommy Fury. Idris is a good talker. He can sell a fight, and he'd absolutely relish the chance to be the first man to beat Tommy Fury. But I have got to be honest, as I said at the beginning, this fight makes way more sense for Idris Virgo than it does for Tommy Fury. And for those reasons, I probably can't see it happening. Which brings us on to the headline, the main event, and the main attraction of this hypothetical pay-per-view card, and that is Slim versus Anderson Gibb. Now, this fight just can't disappoint, can it? Two men who love to fight. Two men who I would say are probably the most improved in influencer boxing that I've seen, and two men who desperately deserve to headline an event like this. Now, the first time I had ever heard of Gibb was when he boxed Jake Paul, and being that he was stopped in one round, I can't say that I was massively impressed by him. I mean, 
He definitely looked game, tough and willing, but that's probably about as far as it goes. But I'm very happy to say that I was clearly wrong because Gibbs since then has gone on a run of fights where he beat Taylor Holder, Austin McBroom twice, current Misfits champion Jarvis. So in a nutshell, Gibbs become a bit of a beast, hasn't he? And the development of his boxing ability is something that needs massive, massive praise. But the man across the ring from him would be another seriously dangerous fella and that man is slim the big dog i fucking love this guy you know he is the definition of entertainment in a misfits ring the showmanship the knockout power the ring walks only slim can walk to backstreet boys and still make it look gangster and when you look at slim's record of 7 and 0 that's about as good as it gets in influencer boxing isn't it and when i think about those fights the only fight that I would say wasn't looked at as like a 50-50 fight going in was maybe the NNA Productions fight. But apart from that, he's always come out on top in fights that were very, very evenly matched. And I think the Salt Pappy performance told you everything you really need to know about Slim, you know. He can be hit. He can be hit. But when you're feeling sorry for yourself at the fact that the shots that you just hit him with haven't had the effect that they have on guys you hit in the gym with those same shots... Slim's probably already thrown a couple of haymakers back at you. And Slim's got a lot of boxing skill, you know, but the thing for me which makes him so hard to beat is that dog in him. Because you're never safe with Slim, are you? Like, you'll have a bit of success against him and he lures you in, come in to this little false sense of security. I saw Salt Pappy completely forget his defensive responsibilities when he was boxing Slim. And it's easy to do, you know, like, against a guy with maybe a lesser chin, worse powers of recovery, maybe... Maybe you can forget that defense ever so slightly and just try and close the show. But against Slim, you're never safe. He will wait for you. He will time you. And he will punish you. Now, I find this particular fight fascinating. And there is a reason why it would be my headline. Slim has been very open and vocal as to saying he wants a real, real big fight next. And I think if KSI was to come back, barring a Jake Paul or a Tommy Fury, Slim has got to be the name that people would want to see him in there with. He's got to be the highest ranked contender. And if he was to get a win over Anderson Gibb, that status would be absolutely cemented. And if Gibb was to win... Who's to say that a Jake Paul rematch couldn't happen? If he was happy to stay in the light heavyweight division, there's so many guys that would make for such good, such entertaining fights with Anderson Gibbs. So I really, really think that it's a win-win. Either man, whether they win, lose, or draw, could go on to big fights. But this is the fight that I would love to see next. And out of the fights that have been made so far this year on Misfits, this one would top them all, I believe. So anyway, there is my hypothetical lineup for the next Misfits pay-per-view card. I think there's some very, very good fights on that card. And I do think, despite the fact that a KSI or maybe a Logan Paul would be a massive miss on the card, I still think people would be paying for that one, you know. I don't think it would do as well as the Prime card last year. But fuck me, you can do a quarter as well as that Prime card did and it would still be worth your while chucking it on pay-per-view. So... If you think that card's pay-per-view, let me know in the comment section below. If you don't, also let me know. And if I forgot some absolutely mouth-watering fights that should have been on that list, put them in the comments. People, if you've made it around to the end of another video, please do me a massive favour. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I will see you all in the next one.